Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner and we have a spectacular day here on the Butterfly Effect. It's stage 11 of the Giro, 162 kilometers length, 100 miles in distance more or less, and it is a fantastic day. First part of the stage more or less easy and flat, not that epic. The second half is when things get really interesting. We have four gravel road sections split up and it's hilly all the way from the second half into the finish of today's stage. The gravel is up, it's down, it's left and right, twisty, dirty, it's nasty out there and dusty on top of that. The cars in front are just throwing up dust everywhere so it gets very difficult for the riders to be able to see anything. Now, as the racing starts, 11 guys will slide off the front and easy peasy, nice and squeezy, no problem. They're just riding off the front, no big fight. When you look at the group of 11, there's only two guys, from one from UA Team Emirates and one from FDJ that have any riders in the top 10. So not the big, big favorites back there with their teams represented in the front break. Now that group 11, they'll roll fast and hard together and they're gonna put some time. We'll give it about 15 minutes maximum time when they enter the first gravel road section. Now they go into the gravel road section nice and smooth. There's no effort on their part and no stress, no fighting to get into the left turn there before the first section starts. They're just gonna smooth in there. You'll see one rider, he's even reaching into his pocket and he's eating some food and adjusting his position on the saddle. Nothing stressful about the front group. But now we get on the gravel roads and I wanna point something out when you're watching these particular races that get on gravel roads. There's really two lines where the cars drive on left and right side. You get outside of those areas, it's gonna be gravel and nasty and the tires on these bikes just will not handle that very well. You have to stay on the line of where the cars drive. In the center, same thing, incredibly nasty. If you get into the center, all the way right or all the way left of the road, there's a good chance you're gonna crash on today's stage. Now the group from behind is absolutely pushing with every favorite in the top 10 and their teams on the front driving to get into this first gravel section. But it's Inos Grenaderas, Filippo Ghana that does the job first and he gets in there with none other than Egon Bernal, race leader at this year's Giro, just solid on his wheel. Now this is where things start getting really interesting because Ineos Grenadiers' tactics so far have been spot on. Everything that I thought and that I would have picked myself to do from this moment on, I would have never have done this tactic, but I don't agree. I don't disagree with the tactic, but it's not one I would have picked because Filippo Ghana is throwing down and he is destroying the field. I mean, it is just split and strung out, dust everywhere. And it's the Ineos Grenadiers rider with race leader Egon Bernal just destroying everybody at this year's Giro on the first section of gravel. This section's pretty long. It's going in, in good length at nine kilometers, but what is really surprising me is the risk that Filippo Ghana is putting on all these descents. At one point in time, he almost crashes with his right foot out as he's trying to make the turn. Egon Bernal though, he's smooth back there, no problem. Didn't stress, didn't worry. It even looks like he's encouraging Filippo Ghana to get back into the groove and start splitting this race up. When they come out of that first gravel stone section, it's full chaos because there's not really guys in the top 10 up there with Enos Grenadiers. Most of the important ones, Remco Evnenpool is back there with the Kunik Quickstep chasing like crazy. He's got Alexander Vlasov from Astana that missed the move. Adam Yates missed the move back there. Dan Martin, Davide Formolo, both in the top 10, will never see the front race again after that first section of gravel. Up ahead, Ineos Grenadiers is driving in as hard as they can with Filippo Ghana, and he'll go all the way until we get into the really steep climbs for about another 10K, and then he'll pull off and his day's over. When I'm sitting on the couch, I'm thinking, wow, this is getting interesting now. At that moment, I could only see two riders with Egon Bernal, Gianni Moscon, and of course, there, Jonathan Navarez, who's doing a fantastic job at the front. Now, later it pans back, and I see Daniel Martinez back there. So, Ineos Grenadiers, they're okay, they got four, but when Filippo Ghana dropped, I was quite surprised 
that he dropped off at that point, and then I started to get worried for the tactic. But Enos Grenadiers, they're they're going they're going all in on this stage. Like it's 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 fabulous, and they're not holding back. So they got their team on the front. The Kuna Quick Step do an amazing job of setting a tempo back there from for Rimko Evnipool, and he's going to get back and latch onto the front group with all of the favorites in the top 10, minus those two, Dan Martin and Davide Formulo. Now things get interesting because other teams start helping out and working on the front. But when we get into the third section of gravel, this really starts to get interesting. And yesterday on the butterfly effect during the rest day, I told you to keep an eye out for Dukuna Quick Step. Almeida and whether or not if he was going to be a team player on today's stage. The Kuna Quick Step used up all their guys except for Almeida and Rimco there to get their race leader back up to the front group. Now they're down with just two guys. And the whole time before the third section of gravel there with about 20 kilometers to go, even before that, the 10K, the 20K before that, Rimco Evnipool, he's back there suffering the whole time. He's always got little gaps in front of him to the group, to the front group of favorites there. And whenever I see Joel and Almeida up there, he's at the front of that group and never back with his leader. This is an absolute catastrophic mess up of major proportion. At no point in time should Almeida have ever been in front of Remco Evnipool unless he was actually pulling on the front and they were dropping Egon Bernal. Joe Allen Almeida's sole job on today's stage would be to always keep an eye on Remco at all times. He could be directly in front of him, but he's got to be able to look back and see Remco all the time or hear if Remco has a problem. If it was my team with the Kuna Quick Step, I would have called him straight off, straight out of the front of that group and put him back there with Remco and always have him in front of Remco. And every time there's a split in any of the descent, and any of the crazy gravel descending turns there where Rimco was losing, was opening gaps, you just have Almeida easily close that gap right back to the group. Instead, it's Rimco back there sprinting to close those gaps. He's having a hard time on the dirt roads. I don't know if at this point in time if it's bad legs or bad, bad bike handling skills, but I assume it's a combination of both. And so finally, under 20K to go is when Rimco Evnipool, he pulls off and finally drops and opens a gap. Four, maybe five kilometers later before Joel Almeida is called back out of the front group to go back there and help Rimco Evnipool try to salvage today's stage and limit the damage. When he does get back there, Remco Evnipool is furious. There is no doubt he wants nothing to do with Joellen Almeida. I could be wrong here, but I don't think so. I've seen this played out when I did the Tour de France with Lance Armstrong and we went through the cobblestone sections there of Perry Roubaix. Lance was up the road and he flatted, and then Levi Leipheimer rode right past him. And later in the bus, it was a massive discussion and everybody was arguing about what went on there. Levi said he never saw Lance Armstrong on the cobblestones. Man, the road's only like six feet wide. I don't know how you miss Lance Armstrong on the cobblestones, but he rode right past him. When I'm sitting on the couch, this is the exact same thing I'm seeing. There's no way Joe Allen Almeida doesn't know that Remco Evnipool had just got dropped because in front of Joe Allen Almeida is Egon Bernal, and he is sprinting now trying to get as much of a gap in time on Evnipool as he possibly can. There's no way Joe Allen Almeida could not understand what was going on at this point in time. He's just choosing not to go back there. Finally, Dakuna Quick Step have yelled at him enough on the race radio where he's dropped back there and he's going to go back and try to help Rimco. Rimco's furious, flips his radio out of his ear, and basically, I'm sure, tells Almeida, just get out of here. I don't want to ever see you again. Almeida distances him again, ensured the Kunik Quick Step directors get on the radio and send Almeida right back. And so two kilometers later, he's back there again. Remco Evnipul was on his own for four to five kilometers and then another kilometer on his own before finally Joe Allen Almeida is back there and he's going to finally do his job, what he's paid to do as a professional. Now, I could be wrong. 
He might not have ever known what was going on. He could be an incredibly smart person and just doesn't understand anything about bike racing. But I don't think you could be wrong for this length of time. He knew what he was doing. He doesn't have a contract with that team for next year. And he was hoping to just ride off into the sunset and let Rimco Avenue Pool get dropped back there and left for dead. Up front, guys are now helping Egon Bernal. First, it's Gianni Moscon on the front after Egon's drilled it. Then Gianni Moscon gets on the front and he's going all in 100% for as long as he can until he finally blows. After that, EF Education, who have not one, not two, but three riders in the front group now with Egon Bernal. They're on the front driving too because they all know Evening Pool is back there losing time. Big favorite Evening Pool losing time back there. With all the teams working, Movistar's working, EF Education's working. Bahrain Victorious is up there and Egon Bernal now is on his own and isolated with no teammates. Now I start to get a little worried because they still got some more gravel roads. If you flat at this time and this is what I didn't like about this tactic. It's not that if you take if you take the possibility of bad luck out. I love their tactic and I would have used it myself but I know there's always bad luck that's highly rated in terms of it happening on today's stage. So with Enos Grenadier's aggressive racing, it wasn't what I would have done. And now I start to worry because Egon Bernal is on his own. The upside is teams are riding on the front for him and they can't attack him while you have Evnipool back there gapped off because they want to get time on him. But if he flats, if he crashes in the gravel, he's left without teammates. That's the reason why I disagree with, the, with Enos Grenadier's tactics on today's stage. I loved watching them. I would love to employ them, but I never would want to take the risk of having Egon Bernal isolated on gravel roads, and that's why I disagree. Up the road, though, like I said, all the teams are jumping in. Finally, Ciccone. Trek Segafredo throws in an attack, and he's going to pay for that attack hard later, but he throws in the attack anyways. Right away, Egon Bernal brings it back. Then after that, it's Bookman, the Bora Hansko rider gets a gap with about five kilometers to go, and he's going off solo. Alexander Vlasov from Astana throws in an attack, and Egon Bernal counters it and is just absolutely impressive with about two kilometers to go. He goes solo, bridges up to the Bora Hansko rider Bookman, and those two are working well together all the way to finish and putting maximum time on all of the favorites from behind. Up front, the group of 11. I've left them out. I'm sorry. We really didn't get to see much of them during the stage. They had attacked each other uh, multiple times on section three and four of the gravel. Finally, up front there, it's Alessandra Covey from UAE Team Emirates and Mario Schmidt from Quebec Asos going to the line. They got off with about seven and a half kilometers to go and they worked well together with Mario Schmidt leading out the sprint and taking the win for Quebec Asos on a beautiful stage today. Behind, I told you that it's Egon, Bernal, and Bookman now working well together and they'll drive all the way to the line with Egon Bernal throwing in a big sprint with about 200 meters to go to gap off Bookman of about two or three seconds back. Egon Bernal's fabulous today. He was absolutely flawless, always at the front and always in perfect position. Behind the Kunik quick step, man, embarrassing. That's the only thing I can possibly say on today's stage is that absolutely 100% embarrassing what you saw out of tactics from Joalan Almeida on today's stage. The Portuguese rider just let the whole team down. When they're in the bus later today, it's going to be ugly. It's not just going to be Remco Evnipool back there that's upset with them. It's going to be every member of that team that worked hard for these first 10 stages plus this epic stage today on the dirt roads of Italy. The staff's going to be upset. Management's going to be upset. Patrick Lefebvre, you know he's going to be making a phone call. And I'm just curious whether or not if we're going to see Joel and Almeida start tomorrow's stage or if they just kick him out of the race. One other team I want to point out, FDJ. They had a rider in the break. He didn't win today. Remember, they had fifth on the stage with Walter, fifth on general classification entering today's stage with Walter. They put one rider in the break that never dropped back when Walter's got gapped. 
and they had one guy in the front with Egon Bernal when Walter got dropped who has no chance of winning the stage, no chance on general classification. That was Rudy Millard, and still he chose not to drop back for a while and go back for his race leader, Valters, to do time damage control back there and help fifth place on general classification work. In my book, when I look at FDJ, they failed on their tactics, but nothing is more embarrassing than the Kuna Quick Step. Oh my God, it's going to be ugly in their hotel tonight, and I'm just curious to see who even starts the race at tomorrow's stage. Now, tomorrow's an epic day of racing, and we're getting into the bigger mountains. 210 kilometers plus on tomorrow's stage. It's massive in length, the longest we've had so far, and it's going to be hard and fast and ugly on tomorrow's stage. But Ineos Grenadiers are looking fabulous, so keep an eye on them. Egon Bernal, we know he's the best in this race for sure now. Remco Evnipol, can he recover and do something special to gain back the two plus minutes he lost on today's stage? Going to be interesting. Alexander Vlasov from Astana, he's throwing in great attacks and he's looking fabulous. He is our next favorite rider there to give Egon Bernal any kind of problems in this Giro. Hope you like, hope you like today's stage. Like and subscribe and I'll see you real soon.